All right, for today, uh, we'd like to talk about practical faith, okay? Uh, especially in this time of pandemic, you know, we need to be more practical yeah. with uh, what we do you know, to, to deal or to cope up with what we are going through. And so, uh, practical faith, first let us define what do we mean by practical faith. Uh, let's break it down, yo. <laughs> The word practical, from the word practical, we mean actual application, okay? It's concerning the actual uh, uh, doing of, uh, rather than just the, the theory or ideas, okay? So, we have the hands-on or the action, okay? So, that's what we mean by practical. It's something that is experiential. So, you, you experience what you believe, okay? You apply it. In real life, right? Now, what about the word faith? Of course, there's so many faith. We're not going to discuss about saving faith. I mean, you know, the, but simply, I want to say that uh, uh, define faith in our context for the sake uh, for our topic that it has something to do with our belief system. Okay, in in general, it's about our trust in God's faithfulness. Remember when the Bible says have faith in God, it's not about your faith of believing in God, but it's your faith believing in God, God's faithfulness. So that's the point. So it's not just because of your faith, but because God is faithful. That's why you have faith in His faithfulness. So that, that's yeah. the, the idea. Okay, so when we, t when we talk about faith, uh, faith in what the Word of God teaches. Okay, so why do we put our confidence, our trust in the Word of God? Because God can be trusted. Because God is faithful to His promises. That's why it is just right, okay, that you put your faith in God because of His faithfulness, okay? So, uh, true faith will always lead to obedience. Now, there's a small phrase, last part of Romans 1.5. In, uh, in, in most, uh, in most, as a version it talks uh, it says obedience of faith okay obedience of faith or in niv obedience that comes from faith meaning to say the idea or the principle behind this is that uh true faith will always end up okay in obedience in action because yeah. if you really believe what you believe you will do it you will apply it Okay, you will go for it, right? But if you don't believe it, then you will not, you know, you will have nothing to do with it, right? So, again, uh, so let's combine the, the, the practical. I mean, why do we mean that it, it's in our belief system, it's connected with our uh, obedience or action, okay? Because, why? Because real faith will affect our thoughts. Oh, yes. Okay, it will affect our thoughts, our words. And our deeds, okay? And so our vision, our behavior, our lifestyle, mm -hmm. or uh, uh, it will affect our everyday life yeah. also. So that is why we said, we said, I said that uh, faith will result to works, okay? Will result to action. Faith right? in action. Faith in action, right. So it requires response, okay? Submission, obedience, or action on the believer's end. Okay, so that is, that is why our topic for today is practical faith. So, combining the two, okay, practical faith is what enables us to translate our trust. Okay, did you put that one? To translate our trust in God to obedience, to obey Him. Okay, so let us trust God completely and obey what He says, okay, in His Word, regardless of the cost. Oh yeah. All right. So uh, that's the practi uh, That's that's what we mean by uh, practical faith. All right. So one of the uh, key character or example that I can pick from Scripture is, is James. Okay. Been thinking about this for many weeks, <laughs> and because um, of course James. Now who is James in the book of James? Okay. And our uh, I'm referring to chapter 2 right now, okay? Uh, James was a very practical man, 
Okay? It's very practical. He's spiritual, yes, he is. But he is also uh, giving emphasis on, on, on the practical side of our faith. Okay? So the book of James is probably the most practical book in the New Testament. So some says it's the equivalent of Proverbs in the New Testament. Okay? Um, so James emphasizes on the importance of practical daily living. Okay, uh, the, 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 those aspects of the Christian faith. So if you are in Christ, okay, you are in faith, you, you are a believer, then you should read the book of James, mm -hmm. okay, because it will help you, uh, give you uh, the idea of how it is to walk uh, in a Christian uh, way. <laughs> All right, so James right. is packed with practical lessons which teaches Christians what it means to follow Jesus. Amen. Okay? Follow Jesus. So James himself was what? Again, a living example or a practical man. Okay? An example of practical faith. So our, for our, our key, key scriptures, uh, John, uh, do you have it there? Uh, we are going to read our main passage for today, which is James chapter 2. Uh, beginning from verse 14 to 26. Now, if you have your Bibles with you, can oh, it's there. It's, in, it's on the screen. It's well. on your screen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I forgot. So, all right. Go ahead. Um, all right. Uh, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have a faith but has no deeds? Mm -hmm. Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. Mm -hmm. If one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm and well fed, mm -hmm. but does nothing about their physical needs, then what good if demons believe that? <laughs> and shudder. <laughs> and shudder. They tremble. <laughs> oh, yes. Verse 20. You foolish person, you, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. Mm -hmm. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, mm -hmm. and he was called God's friend. Mm -hmm. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. Mm. In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies mm -hmm. and set, sent, them, the spies. Right. sent them off in a different direction? direction. That's right. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Okay, faith without works is dead. So you see yeah. the, the connection. No, I mean, James uh, is not actually separating them, but in order for the readers, for his hearers to understand his point, he tried to put a distinction, but actually what he wanted his hearers and readers to understand is that the, they, they go together, okay? The, your faith and your action must go together because one has to... You know, one, I mean, without works, the, your faith is useless, okay? So, uh, I mean, your, your, your faith is proven by your action. It's something like that. So, they need each other. You know? if, if you're a handyman, you understand like uh, the principle of epoxy, okay? There is, uh, you have to mix the hardener and the adhesive. So, so it, it has a function, okay? It's, it's going to be useful, but the but if it's separate it's useless so yeah. the same thing now uh, james is not pertaining to eternal life because concerning about eternal life uh the faith that we we are trying uh we um concerning eternal life sorry uh it's about saving faith okay saving faith has something to do with who jesus is what he did okay it has something to do with uh, what jesus did in the cross because uh we are we cannot earn salvation okay salvation is by faith it is by grace through faith not by works so we cannot be saved by good works 
Okay, so why? Who did the work? Jesus did the work. You see, you have faith, you will be saved. But who did the work? Jesus did it in the cross 2,000 years ago. He paid for our sins. Amen. That, that's why all he asks is now repent and put your trust in Jesus, in the gospel. Okay, so the thing is, again, still, still faith and action goes together. Okay, faith obedience goes together. So you must live by what you profess. Yeah. Right? So, again, uh, in, in these verses uh, about Rahab, I think I already shared uh, that the story. Okay, I don't know if it's online or in, in the on site church. I also mentioned about Abraham. Uh, all of these people, okay, they have. Uh, authentic faith in God but their faith did not end up with theory with with just words they did it yes words translated into action it's always like that that's why to make it simple practical faith I mean I, I want you to practice what you believe okay that's why Jesus said hear and obey you know, if you hear, if you know what to do and you don't obey the Lord, then you'll be in trouble in life. I tell you, you will go through a lot of pain in this life, especially in this time of pandemic. But you know what? In this time of pandemic, even the church goes through a lot of trials and testings. You must pass the test. I tell you, if you think the test uh, right now is in the area of the physical, okay, of health, no, 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 no. It's not just that, but so many areas because when people go through some difficulty, okay, everything will be affected. Our character, our emotion, everything is being shaken right now. Now is the time to apply what you heard in the church, in your Bible study groups, all those years. It's time to apply. It's, it's like the final exam, all right? So, yeah. guys, uh, <clears throat> again, Okay, verse 17, it says, In the same way, faith by itself, okay, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. It is. Okay, it is. Because what? Your faith is not proven true that, you know, you don't have faith because you don't believe. All right? There's so many illustrations in the Bible I can tell you, but, you know, for the sake of time. Uh, verse 26, as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works or without deeds is dead. Faith without works is dead. Again, this is not concerning salvation, but concerning the practical aspect of our Christian life or, or of our Christian walk. Now, as a Christian, you have to understand, people will look at you. Okay, the people will listen to what you preach. But if they don't see what you preach in your life, why would they believe you? <laughs> you know, a relative told me, you know, Kuya, I did not give my life to Jesus because of what you preach. I mean, they heard a lot, but he, she said, of course, the hardest people to reach out are your relatives. Ah, sorry, relatives, but th that's the truth. Okay. And, 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 and this relative of mine told me, Kuya, I did not receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior because of what you said, but because of what I see. Mm. So all those years, this relative of mine is just very intelligent, very intelligent. All, you know, but here's the thing. This relative of mine is always observing trying to see whether your faith your professed faith can be validated by your life the same thing my friend they must see christ the character of christ in us being formed okay so we go through trials and, and, and there is a purpose to that to to transform us if we respond if we respond accordingly according to what jesus teaches in the word okay so my point here right now my friend is i want you i encourage you to apply what you've learned do it okay let them see that jesus is real and he is working in our lives that's the point now let's continue so we can uh, make progress 
practical faith, therefore, in short, okay, in other words, practical faith means faith in action. Okay, faith in action. Okay, it is doing or carrying out our professed faith. So, thing is, what do you believe? Okay, do you practice what you believe? That's the million dollar question, I think. <laughs> so, we were in Croc Park okay, this week. I don't know what day was that. We had time. We, uh, w I hope to regularly exercise, but th the thing is, so many things to do. But, and, and while we were there, I was meditating, praying to God, really, you know, engaged. And, 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 and that's the time you can pour out your heart to Him. And, and the, he, these are some of the illustrations I can share with you also from that devotional okay mm -hmm. that faith will be tried and choices will be placed at the table okay faith will be tried and choices will be placed at the table what do we mean by that that each believer every christian okay you and i okay uh you who are listening watching this program and us who are here in this uh in this uh, living room living <laughs> in studio. our studio <laughs> station whatever <laughs> so <coughs> we will be tried and choices will be placed at the table and you choose okay uh even the people in the old testament you know characters in the test they they went through this everyone will go through this okay and your response and reaction okay response is positive reaction is negative okay so your response and reaction is what we call practical faith it is the actual application it is what you do how you responded how you reacted to the event or the trial that was placed in front of you so here's here's the example i'm going to give you an example of abraham okay the testing of abraham's faith uh, John read it er, uh, a while ago, but let me encapsulate it, okay? The testing of Abraham's faith in God. How was he tested? How was his faith tested? Okay. At the table, he had two options. Only two, okay? Listen. Letter A, option A, obey God and lose his son Isaac. Okay, remember, uh, the God asked for ask abraham to offer his son isaac the, his only son isaac in the altar at mm -hmm. the altar so it's two options at the table uh obey god and lose your son isaac okay or letter b option b save his son isaac and disobey god you see the, only two options at that table so his faith was tried so which option did he choose of course he chose to choose to obey God to respond he responded but that was a hard one it's a painful one it's a difficult painful one I tell you that's why if I go through some trials I said oh God at least it's not like Abraham at least it's not like Job but you see yeah. all of us will go through this our faith will be tested and options will be placed at the table now, another example. The testing of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's loyalty to God. They were tested. Their loyalty. Okay? At the table, they had two options again. Two. What are those? Letter A. Option A. Bow to Nebuchadnezzar's image. To the, to the big idol. Okay? Bow to Nebuchadnezzar's image and live. Okay? Yeah. Okay? And you'll be safe. Or letter B, option B, stay loyal to the God of the Jews, to, 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 to God of heaven, to the God of Israel, and be thrown into the fiery furnace. Okay? It's a burning. Uh, y y they will burn you to death in, in that furnace. Okay? So, uh, okay. So, either you stay loyal to God, you will bow to no other God, but to the God of the Jews, to to. to, to to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you'll be thrown into the furnace and die. So, those two options only. But guess what? 
They said, O oh, king, even if the Lord our God will not save us, we will still not bow to your idol. Wow. Loyal. <laughs> wow. What a loyalty. Okay? So, we know now which option did they choose? They would rather choose to be burned to be burned than to bow to an idol. So, wow. you see two options. And your faith will be tested down. Of course, these guys are, you know, their faith are that strong. They're professionals. <laughs> <laughs> By the way. Okay. So, how about the testing of Daniel's loyalty to God? Okay. Daniel's loyalty to God. There was a royal edict or there was an ordinance issued that says, For the next 30 days, anyone who prays to any god or human other than you, O King Darius, Okay, their king was Darius, should be thrown into the den of lions. So Daniel was made aware that there was that edict. Okay, there was that ordinance. For 30 days, everyone should pray only to the king. Okay, not to any gods. But what did Daniel do? He continued with his regular uh, prayer. prayer. Wow. Open this window and pray to God so everyone can see that he prays to the living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? And so, and so, okay? Uh, uh, Daniel had two options. Uh, letter A, option A, pray to, the, to King Darius and live, or uh, B, pray to his God in heaven and be thrown in the lion's den. And what happened? He prayed to God. Option option B, he, he, he chose to be loyal to God. So they casted him to the lion's den. And then what happened? Of course, God saved him. All right. So uh, the thing is this. Uh, everyone will go through this. So allow me to throw the question back to you. What do you believe? Do you practice what you believe? Huh. Are you faithful with your giving, for example? Okay, are we giving? Uh, are we giving what is due God? Are our faithfulness and generosity is tested when we give what is due God? When times are hard, do we still give our tithes and offerings? We do, okay? Because if not, I promise you, life will be more difficult. <laughs> That's the truth. Proven and tested. You see, uh, example it's the principle of sowing and reaping <coughs> if you don't plant you don't plant today you will not reap any harvest later wow. you see God is testing our hearts concerning money how do we handle how do we manage how do we steward money and so we have to give unto the Lord and uh, yeah and and and, and um, honestly uh, the we, we plan to have um, adjustments or changes with our on-site church because our on-site church is actually living in, in our savings. That is why uh, uh, we encourage you again, friends, let us help the kingdom of the Lord so that uh, we can press on and give glory to the Lord. Okay, so uh, actually whether there is money or no money, the church will continue. Okay, as long as we're here, we are the church. We will worship the Lord. Amen? Amen. But remember, our stewardship is being watched, monitored, and tested by the Lord. And on that day, on the day of reckoning, and the day where God will, will give uh, rewards, remember that. We told you this. Okay? <laughs> we told you. Be faithful. Hear and obey. Practical faith. Apply what you've learned. Because that, that's the thing that we must be particular or, or uh, we must be focused on today in this, during this pandemic is giving God the glory. In every trial, pass the test. Why? Because it glorifies God. Okay? And it, uh, I mean, the devil is be put to shame because he is defeated. He failed. Okay? So pass the test. Amen? So uh, another thing... Um, so if you're going through something right now, okay? If your faith is being tested, know that choices 
will be placed at the table and which option will you choose remember choose what god said okay obey what the lord said will you submit and obey god's word or will you ignore god's word and do what you want to do those are the two options you have uh, at the table yeah um so uh, you know what I will do? I will do what the Lord tells me to do. I will submit no matter what because I surrender what He tells me to surrender. Choose Him. Why do I choose God? Because God is my portion in this life. He is our treasure. There's that song. I, Ate Tata knows this song. Eh? <laughs> you are my portion in this life. I know. Lord, you are. Oh, I forgot. I don't know, <laughs> but there's that song that says, "Lord, you are my portion, a treasure in this life." Uh, and uh, Luke twelve thirty four. Oh yeah, we have it. What does it say? It says, "Can you read that one?" For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Yes, that will be tested also. You know the widow who told uh, the prophet Elijah, uh, this is the last meal that we have and then after this we will die. Yeah. But you see what, what she did. She obeyed the word of the Lord through prophet Elijah and then... There was an overflow. Overflow. It never ran dry. Okay. There, wow. there was food throughout the famine because she obeyed God and blessed the servant of God, blessed the... the, the, the 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 prophet of god so the same way you don't know what blessing will come to you if you be faithful to to god's treasure that he entrust in god's entrustments okay yeah. i don't think i mean that was hard test for that widow because uh, it was the last okay it was the last meal all right and he said well, our last meal and we, we, my son and i will die <laughs> she said so anyway where is your <clears throat> where is your treasure there your heart will be also so if god is your treasure you will always choose god even if you lose everything including your life you choose god right okay let's continue uh another thing uh, we practice our faith how do we practice our faith we practice our faith by translating ideas into action uh, doing what we profess, trusting and obeying God, even when it hurts. Okay, <laughs> my wife told me last night, even if it is difficult. I said, if it's difficult, then it hurts. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so that's it. Um, Hebrews uh, ten twenty three. Can you read? Yeah, let us hold unswervingly mm -hmm. to the hope we profess, for mm. He who promised is faithful. Okay, what the? Wha yes, yes. Uh, uh, would you would you like to add anything to that? Oh. Explain. Well, I'm swerving. I mean, I'm. I'm just. I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, we can. You know, you don't have to take my our word for it because it's actually very evident that God is indeed faithful in the middle of this pandemic. Yet here we are. We're. We're still alive. We're yeah. still um well supplied. Yeah. I mean, God. If God thinks of the birds, yeah, how much more with us? If I mean, He cares like, for them, yes. Yes, especially that we are made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. so, does that make you feel special? <laughs> ah, yes, we're special. Okay, yeah. so again, that was our topic last week. We are special to God, and uh, because it says, "He who promised is faithful." Yeah. Okay, that's why uh, uh, we we hold unswervingly the hope we profess. Wow. Amen. So we don't look gloomy and defeated and a failure. No, we're not that. We're not the tail. We're not even the tail. We're the head yeah. because we are in Christ. Okay. Amen. So know, know that. Uh, uh, okay, let's continue. We practice our faith by trusting and obeying God. In yeah, other man. words. So it's like example. Again, another example. Noah building the ark. <clears throat> Noah was given instruction by God to build an ark. But there was never at that time a Rain. flooding, <laughs> a, 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 a global flooding. So, And people made fun of him. Yeah, because <laughs> it's, it's impossible. Okay, 
But you see, Noah believed God, and because he believed God, he act on it. Wow. Okay. They, uh, they, they built the ark. Okay. So that's one of the example. Practical faith. All right. Another example is Abraham shows us the true faith. That that true faith is a practical trust in God. Okay. Practical meaning say he was willing to surrender. Wow. It was hard again. A hard bargain. Yeah, hard bargain. <laughs> to surrender even when it hurts. I don't know if I can do that, you know, but <laughs> that's why I tell you Abraham became the father of faith. Another example, Joseph storing food for seven years of plenty. Okay, he understood that that dream uh, given to, to Pharaoh. Um, okay, so that's why he acted accordingly. Okay, so uh, the same way uh, with this COVID-19 pandemic challenges, how are we going to respond? How are we going to deal? How are we going to take action? Uh, or how, go, how are we going to address okay, the financial and food crisis? How? This is the present time right now. Yeah. Now, and, 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 uh, and the government is doing everything they can to help, to, to feed, okay, to, to aid uh, those in need. But you see, uh, our finances is also draining. We, we didn't know, we didn't expect, they didn't expect that this pandemic can extend and maybe extend some more. Oh, okay, it's man. been like how many <laughs> months already? Um, um, March, I think the lockdown started at March. Yeah, so, uh, so what do we do? Don't co stop complaining, okay? Don't complain, don't rebel, don't, y y what do you do? You, you pray. And then do what you can do. Read the Bible. So you have an idea. You have wisdom from God what to do. Okay? And then help yourselves. When we help ourselves, we're helping the government. Right? So yeah. thing, my friend, is I want to point out uh, with this basic principle here. Ah, no, no. Uh, principle of sowing and reaping. Again, going back. Okay? So you sow and reap spiritually unto the Lord. And also sow and reap. Uh, uh, plant okay uh, <clears throat> that is why uh, because if you reap uh, it, you will reap nothing if you don't if you sow nothing yeah. all right <laughs> so, <and reap. laughs> so, so don't, don't expect to reap uh, and, and you know out of nothing okay because God has given us the resources or something to, to, to do because he, he, the Lord is training us so again James 2.15 can you read the, uh, this one? This one here. Oh. James 2.15, it says, Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, uh, well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? See? You know they're naked, they have no clothes, you know, and, and, and they, they, they don't have food. Okay? That's in verse 15. Yeah. So, if one of you says, go in peace, come on, keep warm and well fed, and you know they don't have those. Yeah. <laughs> What's the point? So, now you as a believer, you should know what to do. Okay? You should know what to do to address some, some of those basic needs, physical needs. And how do we do it? That's why in verse 17 it says, in the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. Yeah. That is why I'm encouraging people to you, to all city dwellers, uh, we don't have much uh, soil or land to till. Uh, we don't have farmland. Uh, I encourage you to, to research on uh, urban agri agriculture, okay, y where you, you use plastics, bottle, pl uh, plastic bottles, and then. Uh, oh, yeah. Recycle, okay. recyclable. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and so th there's a lot of uh, uh, people who are expert in that. Uh, you can find them in uh, in YouTube, and you can learn and, and experiment. Okay, prepare now. Okay, so and and for those who have a, a farm somewhere, it's time to plant. Okay, you count the months. 
until next year so that you can you plant now so you can harvest next year okay so that's our encouragement so that if god will give us you know huge farmland oh we have a vision we don't want anyone hungry as as much as possible we'd like to feed the hungry and so please pray with us because that is the vision that i had many many months ago that lord and and it's good that uh, one of our friend in church um, his mother-in-law is uh, very, very generous. generous, very supportive, understood. Wow. The, I, I, I'm not uh, in liberty to mention names because I have not asked permission. But I know there are some people when they do good, they will tell you, please don't mention my name. Please don't tell anyone because uh, they just want God to give them compliment one day. I mean, you know, they don't want to lose the reward here. Giving in secret. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. It's the principle in Matthew chapter 5. Okay. Anyway. So, Lord, bring more people like that so that people will survive in case there will be a scarcity or a shortage of food sometime in the near future. God, now is the time, Lord. Help us. Especially, we pray that those people in those who live in the city, Lord, especially those who live in city like in NCR, they need food. Father, I pray that the churches will have vision to, to generate food so to feed the hungry. Whether church member or not church member, Lord, that is our vision. We want to feed the hungry. Lord, that's my challenge. I pray that farmers will listen to us right now. Produce food that, is, that can also help other people who are hungry. Friend, the Bible says, anyone who helps the poor, okay, lends to the Lord. So, utangan si Lord. Okay? God is indebted to you because you help the poor. In so, fact, in fact, it's uh, whatever you have done to the least of my brethren, you have done it unto me, Jesus said. Yes, so, that's his revelation this week. Oh, yes, this week. <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> Isn't it right, mommy? Right? Our mom is okay. right there. <laughs> okay, she will be, okay. You will see her Later. Uh, very soon. So, I hope uh, you understood what okay this is now the the apply okay this is the last part so uh biblically speaking let me look at this biblically speak speaking the world as we see it now okay is going through uh what we call birth pains and we know that birth pains go through stages in fact one of the article in my research i saw five stages okay and eventually this birth pains okay when worst comes to worst to the worst okay or if if uh, what the bible preachers what the bible prophecy teachers say that can possibly happen does happen okay if it does happen are we ready okay they were talking about tribulation talking about this and that something are we ready are you ready are we ready or are you ready if the next wave of of pandemic will happen are you ready how ready are you if you are <laughs> all right so now in the end listen to this okay this is part of my concluding uh, bullets <laughs> In the end, there will be two types of Christians. Two types of Christians. In the end, two kinds of believers. And what are those, John? Those who are willing to lay down their lives for the sake of the gospel. And? Those who will save their lives at the expense of losing their own soul. That's true, my friend. So when worse comes to worse, <clears throat> okay, when uh, what they say could possibly happen does happen then true colors will surface are you a true follower of christ or are you mature because some will really choose b option b 
Those, these are the two options at the table. And the result will be, there will be those who are willing to lay down their lives for the sake of Christ. And those who will save their lives, okay, at the point or at expense of losing their own soul. So when the ten kings, you see the coalition of the ten kings. I'm going to give you a tip. <laughs> when you see the coalition of ten kings, and then for the small horn to rise, could be a significant one because he doesn't have that kind of influence and power, but he will rise, three will fall for him to rise. When that happens, you understand that it's, it's neat. It's there. I mean, you know that the next thing to happen. If you're attending church on site, because I've been talking about pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, and I, I try to to convince them with pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, uh, and then this Sunday I'm gonna show them the combinations and why people aside on this position and that position, etc. And what can we do? Okay, so. Uh, um, so my point right now, my friend, uh, that's why we have the song that I wrote, uh, Allegiance to Christ. Uh, what's the lyrics again first? Uh, my, loyalty my loyalty is to the God. It's my loyalty is to the God who made the heavens and the earth, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. What's the next one? Um. And I confess that Jesus is my Lord, my Savior. He died in my place and rose from the dead on the third day. I pledge to serve no other God but Him. See, that's a loyalty song. Alright? So, friends, I am not afraid if I have to, if God uh, destined me to, not afraid to lay down my life to the one who gave His to me. That's my honor. That's an honor. It's an honor. That's my full expression of love to the one who paid for my sins. Alright, so again, prepare for the rainy, rainy days and understand the times and the seasons. What time is it? 8.40. Oh, I'm sorry. It's too long. Uh, I have so much to say. Okay, I have... Uh, Okay, anyway, we'll cut it short. I'm not I'm going to skip them all, okay? But uh, I'm going to jump uh, to the last part because uh, we have also to prepare to go to to the church on site. So, what do we do? I suggest you start reading the Bible in a serious manner, ma manner and pray for guidance. We all need guidance. We may be doing the same thing, working on the same thing, but uh, the specifics comes from from the Lord Himself. Okay, we God will give will guide us through His Word, through our spiritual leaders, through our mentors. But at the same time, when you have to face what you have to face, okay, details will be given to you by the Holy Spirit who lives in you. He gives you you'll have peace, or your heart will feel heavy, or you need to understand how the Holy Spirit can converse with us it, he, he he ministers to us in different ways i can there is not one okay i hope i can share with you those things but anyway so guidance is very important and uh, just this week uh, i would like to share this some of you have seen this already online uh, about uh, guidance because um, we, again you, we need to ask for guidance and because without God's guidance, okay, we can never accomplish what we ought to accomplish, okay? Um, so here's a song, all right, <laughs> if you can guess. Here's a song performed by my daughter, Angeli Grace, 
okay for their school project actually but then uh, this song is written by Arnel De Pano okay he he was a covid uh, survivor okay uh, he was interviewed uh, at the 700 club asia and uh, god is good okay uh, there was a part in i think in youtube where uh, the the frontliners uh, the medical people sang the song to him to him serenaded him. <laughs> yeah the song that he wrote okay uh, entitled what's the title of the song lead me, lord. lead me lord okay in the in the in the uh, the hymns okay in the old days <laughs> not ancient times but uh, before there was an old song that says i need you lord i need you so it's like acknowledging our need of god okay because without god we can do nothing okay uh i think sandy Patti, i need i was it i need the every hour something like that but this song is uh, the modern version of acknowledging our need of god okay ask for god's guidance and this is a prayer song so uh let's have it all right check this out Comfort me through all the pain that life may bring There's no other hope that I can lean upon Lead me, Lord, lead me all my life Walk by me Walk by me across the lonely roads that I may face Take my arms and let your hand show me the way Show the way to live inside your heart All my days Sad 